Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, approximately 12-12 in Honolulu, 5-12 in New York on Friday. Happy Aloha Friday as we say on the islands. It is the 11th day of February 2022 and this is uh, the Daily Report for Gold and Silver, our weekend review. This last hour to hour and a half of trading has shown a dynamic surge in both the dollar index as well as gold. These are both haven plays. This into response of statements made by the National Security Advisor of the United States and warnings from the government of England. Gold futures basis the most active April contract is currently up $27.10, 1800 $64.60 is our current print price, and that is a gain of almost 1.5%. That is in contrast to silver, which did have gains today, but much less than gold, indicating how much of a haven play we have seen in gold. Silver futures basis, the March contract, is currently fixed at $23.67.5 after factoring in today's increase of approximately 15 cents. And both of these metals moved higher in conjunction with dollar strength, and that is unusual. The U.S. dollar index is up 0.56%, about 54 points in terms of the increase, and is currently fixed at 96.085. Traders, before we go into our forecast and market analysis of gold, I do want to cover our current trade as well as a trade alert which we sent out this morning. For our premium subscribers, you recall that we entered a trade going long the April contract of gold futures at 1790. That was a week ago Thursday, and we bought this low here. As you can see, this is the actual day we entered the trade. As gold prices continue to move higher, we have trailed our stops up on two occasions this morning, taking it to 1830. Currently, we have April gold at $1,864.50, and we'll explain in detail our upside targets as well as our rationale for stop placement. But based on the most simple study, now that we have taken out the top that occurred at approximately $1,850, we have our sights should gold continue to move higher $1,880 per ounce as a very plausible exit strategy. Up until today, the overall characteristic when we looked at a gold chart, and this is a daily candlestick chart, is that we had seen concurrently a series of lower highs and a series of higher lows. That, of course, is a narrowing in range, and it is labeled as a compression triangle to the Western technician. Elliott Wave calls it a symmetrical triangle. In terms of Elliott Wave, he actually puts a count to it, which is why we added our count, which started when the market was trading at approximately 1920, as a A, B, and C, making up the sub count to what we are labeling as a wave one within this defined correction. As you can see, we have created the compression triangle by fixing the trend line to these series of lower highs here, here, and here, as well as higher lows, beginning with this wave one at 1681, our wave three at 1753, and our wave five at $1,780. This is the first occasion since we have been looking at this pattern seriously in which we have seen market forces take gold pricing beyond this very significant resistance line. And I say significant because it is created from simply looking at a series of tops or highs in the markets and creating our angle based upon that. We can easily see that we had a significant break above that. And that is the rationale that we use to move our stop up today to 1830. We believe that the resistance area should become support. And if it breaks seriously back into this triangle, we really want to be able to pull profits immediately on our trade. So we're in at 1790. I'm not anticipating that we will be stopped out 
at 1830. That wasn't our purpose. By raising the stop, it was to protect ourselves should we see the fundamentals that have caused this market to rally dissipate in a short period of time and gold come down very quickly. That being said, as I talked about just a second ago, I really believe that the highs of approximately 1880 are highly achievable and we could even see the market move on this particular rally as high as 1920. Although I would be absolutely satisfied with a move from 1790 to 1880 yielding us a profit of $90 per ounce on a futures contract of 100 ounces. That is a significant gain. This next chart that we are looking at is also a daily chart, but it is in price break format. A price break chart is the Japanese analogous chart to a point and figure chart in that it does away with time as an element and simply looks to create new candles only when there is a series of higher highs or lower lows. In the case of gold, we have had a series of higher highs, which is why you see this projection in purple indicating that this type of chart is alluding to higher prices yet in gold. This next chart is another type of Japanese chart called a Kaji, spelled K-A-G-I, and it also ends up showing us a projection, and the projection is a blue line, and you can see the projection is also forecasting that gold will have higher pricing. The last chart that I do want to look at on today's show is a weekly candlestick chart, and you can see the dramatic price action over the week resulting in a breakout above this resistance line that we have spoken about during our daily chart. But it also allows us to do an extremely long-term price projection using Fibonacci extensions as well as Elliott Wave that is contained in this chart. We simply have to rescale it to do that, which is exactly what I have done here. And we are looking at a longer Elliott Wave count. We are making the assumption that an intermediate, and that is the biggest of our wave count that we are looking at, concluded a wave two, roughly September of 2018, which was at $1,170 for gold. The longest wave, which is our wave three, occurred up until August, which is when gold hit its highest value in history at $2,088 per ounce. We've also calculated that following the record high price, we had a defined correction, which took gold back down to approximately 1682, which put us into a intermediate five, this being the conclusion of four, the conclusion of three, and we've calculated where we believe that five could go to. And that's our long-term projection. We are basing it on the fact that we are probably going to see a series of five waves. We believe that we have in our subcount completed one. This compression triangle was an extended correction that gave us our second wave. We are now in a third wave scenario to calculate where we believe that this wave could go, which would be the termination of the current rally. Simply what we do is we calculate another Fibonacci extension, looking at the price range of this particular area, meaning from 1682 up to 1920, and then do a 1.61 or 2.61 extension to give us a objective target price for the conclusion of this third wave. However, what is important today is that we look at the longest term forecast, which would be the conclusion of the fifth wave. And to accomplish that, one of the simplest and most accurate models that I have found is to do a Fibonacci extension of 0.618 as our conclusion of our fifth wave. When we do that, the calculation indicates that we could see gold over the next year to year and a half go as high as $2,250. That is certainly above the current high of $2,088. On next week's daily reviews, we will begin to calculate what I believe is most important currently, 
which is where our target is for this third wave. And as I said, we are going to base that on doing a Fibonacci extension of this range here, either 1.618 or 2.618. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you on Monday for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.